Hi everybody, it's Adam with heartvalvesurgery.com and we're in San Antonio at the annual meeting of the Society of Thoracic Surgeons. I am thrilled to be joined by Dr. Doug Johnston, who is the Chief of Cardiac Surgery at Northwestern Medicine in Chicago, Illinois. Dr. Johnston, you and I have known each other for many years. It is great to see you again, and thanks for being with me today. Great to see you, Adam. Great to be here. Yeah, so we're at STS, and obviously mm -hmm. there's a lot of new data coming out, research. And at the same time, we're getting questions from patients that are coming at us all around the world wanting your advice and your counsel for them. This question comes in from Joanne, and she asks, My 17-year-old son has a bicuspid aortic valve. What are the latest guidelines to protect him against infection at the dentist? Joanne, great question. By infection, I think what you're referring to is endocarditis. So this is a dreaded problem that happens more frequently in patients who have abnormal aortic valves, and we would classify a bicuspid valve as somewhat abnormal, although many of these valves function very well. Uh, bicuspid valve is a risk factor for endocarditis, and the number one place to get an infection is at the dentist, either through dental work or even dental cleaning. Now, unfortunately, the guidelines have changed recently not to be as forceful about routine prophylaxis, meaning taking antibiotics when you get your teeth cleaned. Those of us who see a lot of endocarditis feel very strongly that people should have routine prophylaxis if they have an echo echocardiogram that shows that the valve is not normal, has a leak, is narrow, is thickened, has a reason why bacteria might stick to it. The same is true even more so once you've had a valve operation. So after you've had a valve replacement or a valve repair, um, you're at increased risk for endocarditis in the long run, and the dentist remains the number one culprit. So not to knock the dentist, but we just need to be careful about that. Um, best thing to do is talk to your dentist and primary care physician about what the options are for prophylaxis, and there are several. Dr. Johnson, incredible advice, and I can't thank you for addressing for patients who already had a valve procedure what they should be doing as well. So super helpful. Joanne, I hope that helped you. I know it helped our community, and Dr. Johnson, as always, thanks for everything you and your team are doing at Northwestern Medicine. Thanks a lot, Adam. Hi everybody, it's Adam. I hope you enjoyed that video. And don't forget, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. Watch the next two educational videos coming up on your screen or click the blue button to visit parkvalvesurgery.com.